<laughs> Morning. How's everyone doing today? Enjoying the winter weather? Today is our last week, our wrap up of this topic, secular religious. We've talked about several things over the last four going on five weeks now. And the whole point, the whole goal has been how we integrate <coughs> this, this life that seems to be separated into secular and religious life. Because that's what the world tells us we should be. That, that religion and church and faith and all these other stuff is, is something to be confined inside a building. That's fine. But when you're, when you're out in the world, when you're out in the real world, well, faith doesn't have any place there. But bib biblically speaking, I can't find anywhere where that was the case with God's people. I don't see it in the beginning of the Old Testament with the patriarchs. I don't see it with the nation of Israel. I don't see it with Jesus' followers. I don't see it with the early church. It didn't exist. <clears throat> because for them, life and faith were one and the same. They were integrated with each other. Everything focused on God, everything pointed towards God, everything led towards God. God, regardless of what was going on. And so we've talked about integrating that. We've talked about giving up our, our treasure to help those in need. We've spoken about being a family, regardless of demographic differences. We've talked about passing on that kind of faith to our children. And so today, I want to take all of those and look at what it would look like if we put this into action. That's really the point, right? Because otherwise, I'm just up here saying nice things. And so I want, I, want, I want you to ask yourself a question for the rest of the time that we're here, and hopefully afterwards... I want you to ask yourself the question, what would it look like? What would my life look like if I took these things and made them a part of who I am, a part of what my life is and is about? Because when we submit to God's rightful place in our lives, we will find the time and we will find the resources to do his will, regardless of what that is. Because once he's in his rightful place, once we take whatever is, is on the throne of our hearts and put him there, and we submit to that, we recognize that he's king, and because he is king, I will submit And then the rest is just figuring out how. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 9, <clears throat> God says, And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. <clears throat> You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. He says, let my word fill your mind. Let my word fill your life. Speak about it. Think about it. Consider it. Not just, not just at the gathering on Sunday morning. When you wake up, when you go to sleep, when you are just out and about. 
Consider my word, because when his word fills our minds, we'll understand that his will can direct our actions. If you remember 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. I'm sorry, 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Whatever you do. Now, Paul says whether you eat or drink, but he also says in anything else. At work, watching TV, watching a movie, reading books, playing a game, being with friends, going to a sports game, coming to worship, driving down the road, driving in Chicago during rush hour, missing your flight, getting ready for Christmas, having your family, speaking to your enemy. Whatever you do, Do it to the glory of God because his will should, his will must direct our actions. But if his word isn't filling our minds, then how can his will direct our actions? Now there are some here who you simply, the time is not there. Or the energy isn't there to to sit and, and study the Bible for four hours at a time. Some of you can. But are you doing what you can? Are you truly doing what you can? Because if we are going to submit, if we're going to place him as king in our lives, if we're going to give ourselves over, we will find the time and the resources to do what he calls us to do. And if you think we can't have it, we can't have the time, we can't have the resources, then you may be underestimating God. Because he he will provide, he can provide whatever it is that he's calling you to do. And if his will is going to direct our lives and direct our actions, then it will bring us to serve those in need. It will bring us to take his word, to spread his word to those who do not know him. And in serving those in need, we'll be willing to give up our treasure to do so. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of treasures. A lot of things that I like, a lot of things I don't want to give up, a lot of things I kind of keep around. Some things I tend to knock off, pedestals. But when we recognize the call, when we recognize His will directing us, then we also recognize that all that we have here, everything that we own, everything we can touch, taste, smell, see, feel, all of it, It's just a shadow. Matthew 6, starting verse 19. Jesus says, do not, so this is a command, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. He says, look, don't store up treasure for yourself here because it's going to be gone. It's going to disappear. At some point in the history of this world, the house you live in will be destroyed. Your car will rust to nothing. But if we recognize that this world is truly not our home, that our home is not our home, (coughs) that when we leave here, when I leave here and I go to my house, which I really love, I really like it, 
But when I go to that house, when I go to that home, it's not my home. All that stuff in there, it's not my stuff. All that I own, all that is, all that fills my house, all that fills the space, the the places that I own, <coughs> is simply God's resources to to do His will with. And I I struggle with this because obviously I'm a human being. And so I struggle with this, and I, and I look at some things, I think, is this going to bring glory to God? And if it doesn't, why is it still sitting there? I go, but I really like it. <clears throat> it's really fun. And I look, at, I look at just different things around, and I say, is this doing anything good at all? No. Is it doing something bad? Probably. Why is it still sitting there? And is there a better way to use it? He thinks there is. We will not regret, you will not regret using your resources, using the things in your home to bring glory to God. You won't regret it. The payoff is better. <clears throat> But if, but if instead we are seeking out the opportunity to show others the truth and to, provi- and to provide for them physically so that they can meet the God who will provide for them spiritually, we're on the right track. <coughs> but we have to be willing to give up the immediate satisfaction of that. And instead, bring it to God and say, how can you use this? How will you use this? And how can you make me a part of what you want? Now, it's easy for me to stand up here and say that. It's a whole lot harder when I get home and I'm, and I'm, and I'm sitting down and I go, yeah. But it's worth it. The prize is worth it. The goal is worth it. Their souls are worth it. <clears throat> but you're not in it alone. I'm not telling you to, to go home and, and be a lone wolf and good luck to you. Because you have help. Now, if you're a Christian, you have God's Spirit living in you. You have God listening to you. You have, you have Christ mediating for you before God, you're not alone. But even beyond that, everyone look to your left. Or that's what that's your left. Everyone look to your right. Do you see people here? Do you see God's people here? Do you see your family here? Do you think you don't have help? Do you think you don't have encouragement? If we will do this together, pulling our resources with any of God's people that we can find, working under our one common Father, for the redemption of his world, we will get so much farther. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 through 29, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. 
For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. There is someone sitting on this side of the auditorium that someone sitting on this side of the auditorium can help. You may be sitting right next to someone that can help you to follow God's will as He calls you to do it. Who has the resources, who has the time, who has the energy, who has the skills you need to follow. Who has the encouragement and the heart to help you follow better, to help you follow more. But are you willing to go out of your way? Are you willing to go out of your comfort zone to talk to them, to ask for it? That's, that's, that's a lot of the, of, of the problem, right? Is I actually have to ask for it. I have to actually talk to someone about this. <clears throat> but but I'm, an, I'm an American. I'm from Texas. And I pull myself up by my bootstraps. You know what happens when you do that? You fall. Because your feet aren't on the ground. And it's not a pretty fall because you land right on your knees and it kind of hurts. But when we recognize that we are truly all one in Christ, that those who are His are our family, <coughs> It may not be someone in this room. It may be someone at another church that you know in the back of your mind can help you, but you really don't want to ask them because last time you talked to them, ooh. <coughs> but if we will stand together, we will be able to stand firmer, to stand stronger when trouble comes. Proverbs says, that if a man falls into a pit and he's alone, there's no one there to help him out. If there's two, he has help. And a cord of three, of three is not quickly broken. He gave us a family for a reason. Let us use it. Let us build the relationships <clears throat> that make this more than just us being lone wolves out in the world. We all like the, the movie where it's the lone wolf doing all these big things. It doesn't work that way in real life. And when we build these relationships, when we encourage each other and help each other and move each other, when we work together to do all of these things, our children will see that lived out. And when our children see this kind of faith lived out, they will see the truth of what it is to follow Christ and the power that it holds. And there is no doubt about the power that it holds. In Mark chapter 10, verse 13, Then they brought little children to Jesus, to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me. And do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. See, in, in, instead of hindering them by our inaction or hindering them by our action, instead, we will encourage them to stand and serve because they will see what a, li what a life of faith lived looks like. And when they see the power of a life of faith, when they see the power of faith in Christ and what that means and what that looks like, do you not think that they'll follow? <clears throat> And in doing so, we will give them a life that Jesus calls them to. We will 
fulfill what Jesus desires and giving them a faith worth inheriting. And we have a faith worth inheriting, right? (coughs) Next week is Thanksgiving, apparently. I totally didn't realize that. Found out yesterday. Said, oh, okay. I hear whispers. People are like, it's Thanksgiving? It's Thanksgiving? Next week's Thanksgiving. Do we not have something enormous to be thankful for? We have a life of faith that when lived out, when followed as Christ calls it to be followed, is more than worth passing on to our children. And it's worth passing on to more than only our children. But our neighbors and our friends and our coworkers, even though you're not supposed to talk about, you know, religious stuff, it's worth it. We can no longer live a secular religious faith. But a true faith opposed to the world, opposed to evil, and opposed to destruction. Everyone knows a couple days ago, terror attacks in France and Paris. It's destruction. It's destruction of life. It's destruction of property. It's it's destruction of families. I went to preaching school with a guy who was from France. He was planning to go back and try and help bring the bring Muslims who were living in France to Christ. That was his goal. When others bring destruction, we bring hope. When others bring death, we bring life. When others bring persecution, we bring Christ. But the only way we'll do that is if we stand strong in His might and in the power of His Word. Not because we're so great, but because He is so great. And because we will be actively marching under the One who is great. Under His banner, under His power, under His kingdom. As our life is in Christ alone, let our walk be in Christ alone. We even have a song. In Christ alone, my hope is found. There is none other to find hope in. There is none other to find life in. The only way to life, the only way to experience what he has is to come to him. And there are some here who need to do that. There are some here who need to be baptized to become a part of what he offers, to live this life that is surrounded and molded and directed by faith, that is directed by God's will as he says it. He didn't leave us blind. He didn't leave us deaf. He didn't leave us without a map. There are those here who need to repent. There are those here who need to confess. There are those here who need to turn around and come back. There are those here who simply need encouragement and hope and prayers. We are your family in Christ. Let us be that. Remember the hope that we have the hope that he has. And if we can help you to do that, won't you let us know while we stand, while we sing.